That's what we do here. It's bass time. It's time to groove. So uh, today I am building a bass groove um, using the inspiration from one of my favorite drum loop packs, uh, Beatbox by my friend Derek Phillips. Um, and I'm giving myself a groove prompt, coming up with some cool stuff to play, playing with attack, tone, articulation, and uh, wanted to break it down for you. So today I'm going to show you again, how I kind of come up with some bass grooves and hopefully give you some inspiration so that you can do that yourself. So uh, if you want to get tab and notation and things like that for this groove, head over to my website, rhymeador.com, check out my Patreon page and my True Fire channel for those things. And uh, yeah, you'll have access to all the stuff. But in the meantime, um, let's talk about this groove. So one of the things that I like to do is listen to drums, get inspired, and then just have some freestyle grooviness. Um, well, I like to give myself a groove prompt so that I have an idea of what I want to play. So the first thing I'll do is I'll listen to the drummer and say, okay, drummer, what are you telling me? And uh, upon first listen, when I think about what the drums are doing, um, they have a nice kind of cool swagger. They're definitely more on the like kind of groovy R&B side of things. Um, and it's got this cool effect on it that makes me want to, you know, play with kind of an effect myself or or at least use a different type of tone maybe not just like your standard finger style so um one of the things that I did was I was like okay well let me kind of do a fun palm muty thing instead of playing standard finger style and uh make this kind of minor groove and I also wanted to work with octaves um octaves are super important on the bass and I wanted to give myself a groove that would force me to practice my octaves. So one of the things that I did was I said, all right, let's make up a groove in E minor. I found my E here on the seventh fret of my A string, a uh, nice little middle of the neck kind of place. And I wanted to use this like kind of darker muted tone. So instead of playing finger style like this, I decided to use my thumb and kind of my first finger. So using my thumb to play kind of the lower notes and then using my first finger to play some of the higher notes. Now, if you have experience with playing slap, you might be saying, oh, like I would do a similar thing. Um, and yeah, you know, you would. You would kind of use your thumb to play some of the lower notes and your first finger or your second finger, your index or middle to play some of the higher notes on the G string and D string. Um, kind of a similar concept. But um, as I'm doing it, I'm also using my palm to keep the strings muted, you know, so so I get this nice kind of attack that's that's really kind of clear and defined and they're um the notes are a lot shorter you know when you use your palm to mute you know if you were to not use it the the string would just the string would just vibrate and play but if you use your palm to mute you'll really get that kind of darker tone and the note will be uh cut a little bit shorter so one of the things that i did with this groove was i was like all right well let me play with octaves and then I'm going to go down just to my flat seventh, a, a whole step below, going from E to D, and kind of played with some of those notes. And I was like, okay, well, let me come up with different ways I can use the octave, play with some cool patterns. And basically kind of said, all right, well, let me get playful with it. Let me play the root, the octave, and then maybe play the root and the octave, or maybe reverse it, play octave root, and just come up with a lot of different things. So when you're creating grooves, the best thing that you can do is ask yourself, with the notes that I'm using, how can I play these? You know, if my theme is I'm using octaves, how can I play those? I could go. You know, something like that. And I like to come up with different patterns. I could also say, well, what if I started with that higher note? 
You know, there are a lot of things that you can do really just by playing octaves and toggling between two notes like E and D, coming up with a lot of different things you could do, different patterns, different combinations of notes. So the cool thing about this is as you're creating grooves, ask yourself these questions. How can I manipulate this just a little bit? How can I bring interest into my playing? How can I use the tone of my, uh, my plucking hand to also create some kind of groove? You know, if I did something like this. It would feel very different. You know, one of the things that playing this way lets you do is it lets you get these little kind of like hiccupy type things. Where it's it's really easy to kind of just play the higher note and then jump down to the lower octave. And then you work it out. So I know that this is kind of an ambiguous video, um, but I guess the goal of it really is to show you that like if you give yourself a theme or a prompt saying like, all right, I'm going to go between E and D, give yourself a drum groove to be inspired by and give yourself um, this notion of like, well, let me use octaves and come up with lots of different ways to play with them. Uh, that is a great way to get grooving. You know, sometimes you just have to give yourself the inspiration and take a technique that you're working on, whether it's octaves or palm muting or, you know, pedaling eighth notes, whatever it is, and come up with a groove that lets you explore and play with that technique. So that's it for today. I hope you take this as inspiration. Uh, please check out my website, my Patreon page, my True Fire channel, all that stuff for more tab notation, other lessons, and uh, happy practicing, everybody. Keep it groovy. <laughs>